Okie dokie, right, let's start dismantling the motorbike. What I think I'm gonna have to remove is this, 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 side cover, seats. So let's take all this gear off and then what we'll do, we'll have a look on the table to have a look at uh, the indicator gear that needs to be installed. So um, T25 Torx bit usually comes in handy when it comes to taking the bike apart. There's a little uh, mounting bracket there. You kind of push in and out right here if, uh, if the camera zooms in to let you see that. You've got to be careful because um, as you'll see on uh, Carl's excellent install video, a lot of these Torx bolts are different lengths and some of them have got little collars and some of them haven't. You've got to not mix them up if you can help it. Well, just don't mix them up. <laughs> Seats. Where are they going to go? Oh, here. Oh, yeah, there's uh, two more screws for this panel as well. So I think it will help to take this off to help me route the cable up towards the front of the bike from where the relay needs to sit at the back of the bike. So I um, don't think there's any reason why we should try and work around this tank panel. Let's just get it off. Still quite stuck on somewhere. Ah, there's another one underneath. Ah, I think we're not finished. I have uh, another um, T20, uh, T25 Torx there, which is rather difficult to access. You can't see it. I'll just have to take my word for it. It's pretty dark back there. Five bolts there. Is that everything? Yes. Um, the mounts here, they're mainly clips that kind of go up and down. So it looks like you generally pull up to remove this side panel. There we go. Come on, man. That is hail. That's ridiculous. Okay, so let's have a look at the gear we've got with the uh, Visor Technic Extreme Evo ISS RGS1 kit. Probably the most important things are the front and rear indicators, um, pair of fronts, pair of rears. This is one of the uh, fronts. I can see that because it has a uh, free terminal. So that's the front pair. And this is one of the rear pair. Couple of ways I can tell that. A, it's got four terminals on the PCB and it also has a switch which uh, affects its operation, which we'll uh, get into a little later on. Other than that, we have uh, these two wires in this bag. These are for connecting to the uh, front indicators and these uh, slightly more um, comprehensive looking cables uh, are for connecting to the rear. We have two small bags here. They look pretty much identical, but they do have different names and different contents. We'll be using the drive install kit or uh, most of the bits in this uh, bag. Won't be using much of this bag. Um, most of the cables inside here are for the American market motorbikes. Rest of the world, generally there's only a couple of bits in here that you need. As I said, Carl's video will go into more detail than my video will <laughs> in terms of uh, the parts that you need for uh, the various bikes. Now I've had to record this video in two parts over several weeks. Um, the installation began well and I've got the front indicators mounted quite happily, which you'll see shortly. Um, but I hit a snag with the rear indicators because I had the basically the wrong indicators and the wrong wiring kit for this model. Um, just a little oversight on our part and the part of myself and Visor Technic. Um, we thought the 2021 model R1250R had the same indicator setup or the same kind of wiring um, setup as the current BMW GS range in Europe and the rest of the world apart from North America. That is not the case. Uh, turns out that my wiring setup for, for this bike is more like pre-2021 BMW models. So um, what that means is um, the indicators, and we'll be showing you this during the video uh, a little later on, the indicators um, on this bike only have two wires coming out of it. And the um, indicators on the latest GS models 
have um, four wires come out of it. So basically the connectors were wrong in the kit that I received. No problem, that's fine. We just uh, got a new kit, which I'll show you in a minute on the desk and uh, we'll get on with fitting it. So the, the new wiring that I received to replace the, uh, the original wiring that I got for the, for the rear indicators um, are, are these. Basically these are two wire connectors and they're basically the same as the two wire connectors at the front of the bike. So um, these also match the, uh, the wiring required for the majority of um, recent BMW models up until the latest GSs which use four wire rear indicator connectors. So I've also received new PCBs to replace the, the original ones because the original ones were developed for the, the four wire connectors. Um, so these will fit kind of a wider range of the, the BMW models, including the North American ones. This kit is called the um, RBT BM03. And I will now be using the rear brake wiring kit, which for the latest GSs around the world, except for North America, you don't need the majority of this kit, but I do now. And so do most worldwide older BMW models um, that lack the four cable connectors. Now, as I've said before, and in fact, I've got a little clip there, um, Carl uh, from Just The Way It Is has done an excellent install video, not just for the European and world GSs that are the recent ones, because that matches the, the bike he's got, but he's also done a separate installation video for the North American BMW models. Now, my kit and my bike pretty closely matches the design, when it comes to the indicators, of those North American GS models. So I'm using that as a guide now to fitting the, the rear indicators. This is the actual, uh, the brains of the unit, the, the relay. So that's um, going to go back here, round about in the, the back seat area. Here are the indicator housings. You do have the option of clear or smoked lenses. And I was supplied with uh, smoked ones. Um, two short ones, two short stems and two medium stems. Now I'm not quite sure which one's gonna go where. I suspect we'll have these uh, short ones on the back and we'll have the um, medium ones uh, on the front. Yeah, that looks pretty, pretty decent there. Now we have the indicator here. The wiring and the plug for the indicator is about here where you see my finger it's all kind of bundled up in this area access is rather tight a good mechanic and technician would remove the headlight i will try and work around this without removing the headlight because i can get the fingers in here back and forth i can get my hand behind the fork and get in here uh, what i need to do basically is feed some cables back and forth through the hole in this housing i think i can do that by feel <laughs> so i think i can get away with doing this without having to take the headlight off so let's um now prepare some wiring so the first thing that um i would uh, recommend and so does carl <laughs> and so do the instructions is before you even attempt to uh fit this wiring harness we remove the 10 amp fuse inside the fuse holder so with this harness what we need to do is add a cable to it and add a cable to the outside of it. Now that cable comes with the drive install kit. Let's open this up and show you what's inside. We've got some uh, new cable ties, which is good. These must do the job of replacing the ones I'm about to snip. We have some posi tap and posi twist connectors we'll get to a little later on. And here we have, if I separate them carefully, uh, three cables. And these little dubris help um, connect the PCBs into the uh, indicator housings. So we'll come back to those later as well. So with these uh, shorter cables out of this uh, set of three, one of these short cables is gonna go from the uh, left-hand side, as you're sitting on the bike at least, left-hand side indicator through or underneath and around the, the back of the headlight to the right indicator and basically kind of poke through um, into the right indicator housing from the left. So this little plug is gonna go into the uh, new indicator on the left-hand side of the bike. 
then this open end or this free end will be poking out on the right hand side for a later connection. This second short cable will be plugging into the PCB on the right hand indicator and then it will be joined to the other cable coming from the left hand indicator. So it doesn't have to be long. This cable probably only has to be about that long with enough wire showing to uh, join it up to that cable coming from the left indicator. Now this longer one, what's going to happen here is it's going to be coming from where the relay goes near the back of the bike. It's going to feed all the way through here somewhere. I'm going to have to suss that out and it's going to end up under here by the right indicator. So what's going to happen is um, the cable from the left indicator that just terminated here somewhere. The cable, the short one, can be on the right indicator and this one coming from the back of the bike. They all get joined together. Yeah, and then this one goes back to, uh, to the relay area. So um, yeah, fair bit of work to do, but if you take your time, you know, do a better job than me and <laughs> you should be able to find that um, all this comes together fairly logically. At least that's what Carl said. And if it doesn't, I'm blaming him. Only joking, Carl, you're a legend. So this end, that's a kind of um, a, a PCB unit all kind of um, protected and, and waterproofed. That's going to sit back here somewhere. Don't entirely know where yet. But uh, yeah, this long cable needs to run alongside the harness. Now at the, um, the PCB end, I know there's a lot of cables, don't panic. <laughs> so at the uh, PCB end or the relay end, we'll have ourselves about six inches of a spare cable or so, because you can see actually there's a black cable here on the relay. Guess what? They're gonna get connected together at some point. So uh, we'll have a little bit of free cable here and then I'm going to connect, or sorry, tape and attach the um, black cable along the side of the uh, relay cable. Now for that, you can use um, insulation tape. Me, I've got a favorite tape I like to use and I've just bought a new roll, so I'm gonna use it. I like um, self amalgamating tape. So with self amalgamating tape, what it does, it, it stretches. And as it stretches and kind of wraps over itself, it adheres to itself. So you can see just about, hopefully, I'm just gonna pull the uh, tape and wrap it around while pulling. Basically it sticks to itself. I don't think you can reuse it. I think once you've stretched it, it's knackered, <laughs> but um, still handy stuff and it looks quite neat. Okay, so um, at the battery terminal end, this is where the long piece of cable needs to go because I need to get basically from the battery terminal to the front of the bike or to the front indicator. Jubbly! Right, um, so um, what I haven't done is taken off the battery cover. That needs to come off as well. I think feeding, as per uh, Carl's video, I think feeding the relay backwards is a bit easier than feeding all these cables forward. So um, let's look for some space. Okay, so I've got a little space here where my finger can go in and out. And I reckon the relay could kind of poke up out here. And I think I'll have a space going back above the battery to get to that point. Um, to protect this cable, what I think I'll do is just wrap it over here. And I'll just use a little bit of masking tape just to uh, Stop it separating from the relay and getting stuck somewhere. Feed the uh, relay back here. Come on. And then it's going below this tube. I don't think there's an easy way to go above that tube. No, I reckon it's got to go below. Then up that little hole I found. Yep, I think that's happening. Just about. Make sure I haven't caught this anywhere. Lovely jubbly. Oh yeah, another thing, before I do any kind of um, messing about with wiring on the bike, which I haven't done yet, you know, I haven't taken any plugs off yet or any detached anything, I'll take off the uh, negative terminal and isolate that from the battery. So there we are, we've got the terminals in place for the relay. We've got the long black cable. 
is that going to find its way to the indicator? Yeah, I think it will. For real? Yeah, baby. Hey, one cable tight. Snipped. There is the uh, the clip. So let's get a little screwdriver in there. Screwdriver in to the top of that clip, which you can't see. It's a bit all bit too dark. Hey, one indicator cable removed from the plug. Um, I don't think that's a T25. Nope, I think that's a T30. Oh, it's not. T27 then. I knew that. So to attach, to detach the indicator, we should spin it down and pull. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Oh no, there we are. Okay, that's interesting. Basically, I had to rotate it 180 degrees. I'll show you now with the light. On um, Carl's video with his um, GS, he rotated it about 90 degrees and extracted. But let me show you what's happening here. If I keep going, there is only kind of one notch and that's at the front of the indicator and the corresponding uh, gap is at the back of the indicator housing. So you've got to rotate 180 degrees to uh, extract said indicator. Jubilee. Okay. Now I'll um, make sure I'm as, uh, assembling the correct indicator. So that's going to be going here. Same setup as well. It's still got the same kind of a single notch there, which is going to go in and around 180 degrees. Beautiful. Um, but uh, yeah, the other thing I want to be so uh, certain of is when the indicator goes on is that this drain hole here is facing the right way, facing down when the indicator's mounted. So let's take that off and do some assembling. So let's check these cables out. I don't think they're handed left or right. They're just two identical cables yeah, with the same kind of uh, wire colors. Yes, I'm sure they are the same. Okay, so what do we need? We need these ends inside the indicator housing here. So let's uh, feed those through one at a time. Take your time, they'll, they'll make it. There you go. And what we'll need is one of these medium cables. They've got two of them with that um, drive kit. The terminal end needs to be in here as well. Three cables. Remember, left hand, as we're sitting on the bike, left hand front indicator. This black long cable is gonna reach over to the right indicator from the left. And uh, this just connects to your, to your motorbike um, connector. Okay, banging this together, we need one of the front indicator PCBs. We have three terminals to look at. So we've got one called V plus 12, one called Term plus, the other one Earth. So, the um, black cable that I fed through goes onto the V plus 12 terminal. It's going to take a bit of a push to make sure it's nicely seated, which it now is. The blue cable here in this little lot goes onto the term plus terminal. Make sure I don't screw anything up. That went on nice and easy. And brown goes to the earth terminal. Now well, I'm going to take one of these little keys and we have a um, slightly different uh, bit of writing on either side of this one called insert elk 3 One says bike side. So as you um, install this little key into the base of the uh, indicator, the one that says bike side needs to be facing inwards towards the headlamp essentially at the front of the bike. 
So let me get the cat see how that so well. Get me the pointy bit down into the uh, indicator here, into the housing, bike side. Yeah, it definitely uh, clicks as you finish the uh, the push. If it doesn't click, you haven't gone all the way in. You can see the little kind of a uh, common section of that key is almost flush with this piece of housing here. So let's pull the cables back gently. I reckon I'm going to actually push the cable back back in a little bit to give me a little bit of slack. There you go. So I think everything is in position. It's all nice and or will be <laughs> nice and flush with the top of the housing. Let's get the cover back on. Don't over tighten this thread because it's only a, a plastic thread at the bottom. You do not want to uh, wreck it. So what I'm going to do here is feed this cable in. I've got to feed that to the other side of the bike in a bit. I'll worry about that later. Bolt it back in just to hold it there. That's connected. I was trying to think, is there a reason why I can't switch the indicator on now? Am I going to destroy anything? I don't think so. Oh, I want to. Oh, I'm going to. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. Okay. Looks right for starters. Ah, there you go. Look at that. So I think we can clearly see there's a lot more light coming out of the uh, the new indicator. That is pretty darn bright. Now I've not connected the relay yet. You know that's still disconnected totally. So it's all it is is that indicator is just acting like a replacement indicator at this point, and that's why I gave into temptation and uh, turned it on. <laughs> I'll tell you what we'll do. One other thing. If we look to the side here, yeah, we can see, you know, a fair bit of light shining on this uh, on this glass section or plastic section of the indicator. But uh, on this side, look how much more uh, visible light surface you have because the uh, indicator glass uh, points outwards compared to being more or less flush like this one. So, yeah, I think we're looking at uh, more visibility with this indicator compared to uh, the OEM. So that gives me a little bit more uh, clearance now. There's a hole for the cable tie and here's the indicator wiring. So uh, let's uh, tidy that up now. I now need to feed this to the front of the bike um, in an efficient manner. And I'm never very efficient at the best of times. You can extend this cable. Visor Technic has included some spares, essentially. So this cable can be extended if you need a, a longer run. I think I can just about get away with what I've got. And that's going to be not very neat and tidy. I'm starting to think maybe I haven't actually got enough cable to do this. Well, actually I will, because I could bring this um, relay back a bit. In fact, the relay, I haven't actually decided where to position this relay. And it could sit near where my can smart is. In fact, I've got a little space just down there where the relay could, could um, plonk itself, I reckon. Yeah. So what's going to happen is we have these cables that go to the to the bike for the indicator. This one's going to sit in the PCB and stay here. It's going to be about that long. The other black cable coming from the um, left indicator. It's also going to come through that hole with the one that's come from the uh, from the relay. So these two cables 
and that cable on the PCB, they're going to meet inside the indicator housing and we're going to tie them all together. That's what's happening. So before I um, start cutting cables in anger, we'll find hopefully an ideal trimming diameter here with my wire trimmers. Damn. Even the smallest diameter there is, is too big <laughs> to uh, trim that wire properly. That's annoying. So uh, yeah. Oh, I'll tell you what. I have another cable trimming device here. Which might just do the job. I'll do a little test here. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. Now, um, this cable will sit on uh, V12 or the 12 volt line. As we know, uh, the uh, blue cable then goes on to the turn positive uh, terminal and the brown one goes to earth. Now, I should have trimmed these cables uh, later actually because I now need to push them through the indicator which was a bit short sighted but I shall do that now. Okie dokie, feed. <laughs> so it's getting quite exciting now. So one cable coming from the back of the bike, from the relay, other cable coming from the uh, opposite indicator. Got this cable, the short one just sitting there on the PCB. I need to feed back the indicator cable through the indicator cable hole. And um, let's sit the indicator there and I can relax. So time for a bit of tidying up. I'll reconnect the indicator, cable tie that back into place. Um, then I'll look at refitting the headlight, taping the, the black cable from the other indicator to the back of the headlight for, for neatness. Thanks for the tip, Carl. <laughs> and then we'll start to sort out the uh, these cables. Right, so yeah, I might as well just tie these together now. Let's get them to the, whoa, get them to the right height. We'll put the externally threaded end onto those. And then what we're doing is just um, keep the uh, the black sheath where that ends in line with the top of this uh, connector and screw down the top. Hold the bottom now as you continue to tighten it all up. And what should happen is everything is nice and tight. Um, I have been stupid because I cable tied that uh, indicator cable back against the, the rest of the bike while I had all this slack. Um, so um, headlight comes back off again. Let's feed that back. Again, checking that the uh, the drain hold is at the bottom of the indicator. Because if it isn't, that'll be a pain. Okay, that is all together. Okie dokie. Front end sorted apart from headlamp alignment, which we'll get to at some point in the future. This red cable from the relay needs to tap into this blue and uh, brown cable here on the, the rear light connector. I'm just going to disconnect this connector. And to give me a bit more leeway, I'm just going to unravel some of this uh, sheath, if I can see it. So yeah, I've uh, given myself a little bit more uh, cable to play with. So um, what I'm going to do, well, I've already stripped back this wire. That's ready to rock. Let's get the posi tap jobby going on. Um, Carl's done some good close ups of this kit, but basically we have this gray end, which the blue cable is going to sit into like so. And the pointy end, which is going to screw onto this blue cable and pierce the sheath. Then this goes over the top of the red cable 
on North American bikes, this Bloom uh, brand cable is a different color. So, <laughs> um, but for the European bikes, this is the cable I need to um, tap into. So what I'm gonna do now is push this um, red cable from the relay into the gap here and then screw on on top the uh, uh, the cap. That should be a nice tight positive connection. I'm leaving it all um, full length because I might need to take this apart on the advice of Visatech once I've explained what's what's happening on my bike and I uh, might have to cut back some cables and, and start again at some point. But uh, for now, we'll shuffle you back up there, if it will let me. Plug you back in, or try to. Lovely. Leave that there. I'm going to um, put the wiring back on and then test the lights. Yes, there we go. We got the white lights. <laughs> Check it out. Now that is pretty bright. That's that's impressive. From a di from here, they kind of look as bright as the Denali's, but the Denali's are only on ten percent. To be fair. So let's see how uh, the indicators work. Um, the Denali's shouldn't be affected. They should behave like they did before. When I indicate left, that should go out. Brilliant. That's gone out as well while I'm indicating. Back to normal. Same for the other side. Excellent, looking good. Um, hazards, cool, as expected. So I've got to um, disassemble and remove the um, mug guard down here. This is an Australian market mug guard, but I think it goes on and off the same way as the European market mug guard. You've got two bolts here and two uh, Torx T25, and you've got, I think, three Torx T25s on the bottom. So they all need to come out, the mug guard drops, and then I can look inside at the uh, indicator wiring and the plugs. So I'm having a bit of trouble. I can only find one indicator plug down here uh, under the mug guard. So this one from the uh, right indicator, yeah, that's this plug. The other one from the left indicator actually seems to disappear back up top, which I'm surprised at because I didn't think I saw one up top. Ah, there you are. So um, that's, there's the indicator cable. <laughs> and it's actually up here. <laughs> um, why on earth would they decide to do that? So one indicator plug beneath the mug guard, one up here. And you know, I imagine the cables are the same length. So this just makes no sense at all, but anyway. What next? Well, we're gonna take this. Oh, what am I working on, by the way? If we look at this drain hole here, this is the uh, right side indicator whose cable on my bike kind of connects back underneath the uh, mug guard. So um, what I'm gonna do is assemble this indicator as much as I can uh, before putting it back on the bike. So that involves this being kind of going underneath the mud guard, these bits with the terminals going into the indicator. The um, gray and the black ones here, we have terminal ends and uh, three uncut ends basically. So the uh, non-terminated end, I'm gonna feed back through that tunnel. Go away. Okay. Cool. Now what? Well, we got the PCB here. Before I put it all back together, what we have is a little jumper switch here on the PCB. Because there's two kind of modes for the rear indicators. Basically, when you indicate the latest GS models, by default, when you indicate, they still have a running light or a red light behind the orange light when it's indicating. 
that's the default behavior for BMWs um, with their running lights. So jumper switch two replicates that. Jumper switch or position one sets a PCB up so when the indicator flashes, the running light goes out. So uh, it just acts like a normal indicator with no other lights while it's indicating inside the unit. I think I prefer that approach as Carl does. He prefers not to have any other lights going on inside this unit while it's indicating. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go for option one on both units. In fact, I'm gonna switch the other one now so I don't forget, which is always possible with me. So both units need to be set to the same switch, obviously. So both on option one. Okay, let's put this together. So on the PCB, we have four terminals. Turn one is for our blue cable in this little combination. Um, v plus 12 is for the black cable. Basically it's the, the power for the driving lights. Um, brake is on the PCB here. That's for the gray cable. That's so these lights light up when you apply your brakes. And the final one, earth, is for the brand cable on the, uh, the indicator cabling. So um, let's put these together. Back ends in, I'm pushing the front end down, but as soon as I lift my finger and, and go for broke, it's in, it's in, <laughs> it's in, stop. I've done it. Uh, it's nicely fitted and it's flush. So I'm not gonna lie, that took a few attempts to get it to get that PCB to stay in position while I dropped the housing. So the uh, little two wire connector does fit through the, uh, the hole of the indicator, which is great. Same for the black and the gray cables. There. Right, indicator in place. Um, connector. Like so. And then these little babbies go back up through the uh, through the hole in the bottom of the bike. And we'll deal with those in a bit. Okay, folks, well, we've hit a bit of a snag. Um, this is the, the two wire connector coming from the uh, left hand indicator that I've just refitted. And that is about, is about as far as it goes. Now, the connector normally sits here at the back of the bike, and this will not reach that. So, what I've discovered, and it may be that Visor Technic aren't aware of this either, for this specific model of bike, is that the rear indicators, as we know, one connector's under the mud guard, one's on the back of the bike, while the cables, are different lengths so uh yeah this is the left hand indicator that's the right hand indicator so i'll need to go back to visor technic to see if they actually have a longer version of that if they haven't well for this model i think they're going to have to develop one so uh for now what i'm going to do is continue to uh reassemble this i just have to decide what to do with the uh indicator that normally sits uh, down here so i think i can just run that over the top of the alarm be quite easy i think and just connect it here so i'll do a little bit of tidying up later on a little bit of cloth taping or gaffer taping stop things moving around in here uh, but for now to finish the installation and get the indicators up and running so i can actually ride the bike we will reconnect the uh Left indicator, the right one's already done underneath the bike. And that leaves, if you remember, we've got um, a black and a gray cable coming from the left indicator. We'll keep it here on the, the left side of the bike as you're sitting on the bike. This is the black and gray cable from the right indicator, just hanging out, chilling on either side of the bike. This red cable and this red and this plug basically is come out from the back of the bike. You would have seen me take that out in the, the previous uh, video session. 
So that's sitting there. I've removed a little bit more kind of this uh, cloth tape here to expose a bit more of the other cable I'm going to need and, and tap into to uh, get all the indicators wired up. Let's um, tell you uh, what we've got next. Doesn't help that this is an entirely separate accessory, which I'm just trying to get out of the way so you, you don't get confused. So again, um, we had the red trigger wire running the front driving lights. That kind of switched on the white lights in those indicators. So that's all good. Going back to the uh, relay hidden under ooh, here. Cool. Now, I also need to tap into the gray cable, gray and black cable with a little bit of a yellow flash on it um, in this unit. So I need to do another bit of tapping. What cable connects to this? The cable that um, plugs into this is the yellow one. Which I had uh, taped the end up of um, last time because I didn't think I'd need it because I thought I had four wire connectors for the indicators. So now I do need it. <laughs> so um, off you come and here's my yellow cable. So this yellow cable needs to be wire tapped into the gray and black cable just like um, this other one was. It's just all nice and tight. It's not going anywhere. That's us sorted. There you are. There you go. So yeah, we've got space for both positive taps to sit in there quite nicely. So I'll tidy the, the cables up a little later. What's next? Well, we have from the relay itself, we've always had a single black cable coming out of the relay. There he is. We've got a single black cable coming from the front of the bike. Which I've already connected once to actually uh, get the, the uh, driving lights running. So we have these two. And now we're going to connect the uh, black cables from both indicators. So basically all four wires come together and they all sit inside one of these, which I think is a posi twist. So these cables here are already pretty much the, uh, the right length. All good to go. The black cables from the indicators are, well, actually, yeah, they're a little long. They're a little long. I might go back to this little kind of a white sleeve here. So they're all coming around this side. I think I'll be tucking it under the, the plastics here when we're all finished. So what I'll do maybe is tie these two cables together for starters. So we twist, tie the lot together. Like so, they're all kind of sitting together snugly. Posi twist. We put this piece over those cables. Which is a bit of a tight fit with those sleeves. Okay, I'm realizing I made a mistake already. <laughs> is it gonna fit? Yeah, I think they fit, okay. Yeah, they're uh, all out there, ready to go. So we'll put the uh, cap on. Groovy. So yeah, tidying up later. So that's those cables. What next? Well, from either indicator, we've still got a gray cable, another gray cable, and a gray cable coming from the relay, which again, I didn't think I needed uh, last time. So let's remove the tape. So same again, basically, just need to um, prepare these cables. Obviously it uh, goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, I've disconnected the, the negative terminal of the battery. There'll be no surprises. And I've got a data tool alarm as well on this bike or data tool tracker, sorry. And so I've um, gone into the settings of that on my, on my smartphone and turned off, um, or sorry, activated garage mode, which basically means um, it won't give a data tool an alarm that I've disconnected the battery. They won't need to call me and uh, ask me to confirm what's happening with the bike. Okay, um, snake pit completed. <laughs> we got all the cables here coming from the indicators. What we got, we got, uh, once I start to um, 
tie things together a little bit or hold things together it'll start to get a little bit neater i know i want the relay under here just have to make all the other cables behave themselves at the same time okie dokie so uh yeah tucked all the the relay and uh, some of the posi twists in there all looking tidy ish <laughs> um I could put some more work into sleeving these, but basically we're done. So the only real snag is, yes, the indicator cable here is from, from the uh, Visor Technic um, unit is too short to go back into the original connector. So I'll get hold of Vi Visor Technic and see if they have a longer one available. Or like I say, if not, hopefully they can develop one. Okay, so here we go. So hopefully you can see that at the back. <laughs> We got the uh, rear light, we got two red lights on the indicators, the driving lights. We got my B6 Denali. Let's uh, indicate left. You can see here on the back, we've got the other camera to hopefully tell you. So I'm using option one on the PCBs, so that turns off the red light when the indicator is flashing. Cool. Other way, as you might expect. Oh, let's um, break. I don't think I can reach around with the helmet cam to show you that, but I've got this camera going on at the back. <laughs> so we're there, just about. Um, I do have to get a longer indicator cable. Um, I'll have to take apart that left indicator, pull the um, cable off the terminals, no, replace it hopefully with a longer cable from Visor Technic. Other than that, we're about good to go, I think. Um, nothing else to do on the bike, apart from um, just enjoy all that extra light and hopefully visibility that we're getting um, with those uh, new indicators on. Any questions, just hit me in the comments or send me uh, an email. My email is uh, accessible on my main page in YouTube. Anyway, it's rickytang at outlook.com. And uh, yeah, hopefully uh, I'll answer your questions in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in another video soon. Three days later. Hello. Now, uh, I do have a longer indicator cable from uh, Visor Technic now to uh, replace the one that was too short for uh, the left hand rear indicator on the bike. And actually, I have a request. And that request goes out to uh, anybody who might already own a BMW R1250R or RS, I don't want to go into the 1200 range, just 1250s. Um, as we discovered on my bike, I have an indicator connector on the top side of the bike, kind of near the alarm and below the back seat. And I have a, another connector on the other side of the bike, kind of um, above the back wheel. Now Visor Technic has been surprised by this configuration basically they haven't come across that sort of setup before so my request to uh, any r1250r or rs owners out there i wondered if you could take a look under your back seat and see if you can spy two indicator connectors on the top side or one indicator connector if it's one indicator connector it is let's show you this it'll be here here's a connector for one of the indicator um cables which i need to move back into its right position but if you can see two of these um, clips here and two of these indicator connectors on the top of the bike, on your R1250R or RS, then maybe my bike's just uh, a Friday afternoon job <laughs> and it's um, uh, unusual in its setup. But yeah, uh, just, just saying there, Visor Technic um, haven't seen this before. They haven't had to extend the cable basically uh, for anybody before. Just me, typical, just me. Uh, so, yeah, um, let's bang this on. There we go, indicator done. Um, and yes, yeah, the bit I've been looking forward to, just be able to put the indicator back, the indicator connector back in its, uh, back in its slot, back in its clip. Ah, that's better. So again, just in case the camera missed it last time, there on my R1250 is the right hand indicator connector. <laughs> What's it doing down here? Who knows? But that's where it lives on my bike. I can now call the installation of the Visor Technic Extreme Evo indicators complete.
So I'd like to thank Visor Technic for the supply of their Extreme Evo indicators. Uh, thank you again also to Carl for his invaluable help and his videos on YouTube. Uh, link below in the uh, description and probably up here somewhere to, uh, to his channel. Um, his videos about fitting these lights to a, to a BMW model, like a flat twin, similar to mine, um, has been really helpful. Um, so um, yeah, I'll be struggling quite a bit more without, without his help. So, test ride next. I'll see you in another video soon, folks. Take care of yourselves and each other. All right, bye-bye.